medidas de seguridad para este cruce peatonal. Mientras tanto, un testigo quien presenció los hechos nos dice que el conductor del vehículo, quien es el jefe del departamento de bomberos de esta ciudad, ni siquiera se bajó del auto para socorrer a las víctimas. We want justice. We want justice. We want justice. Available on a specific day, we use as many officers as we can to fill those spots. 
We don't always have enough officers to fill every spot. We can throw as many as we can. We have a uh, campaign that we have every year uh, with the schools to try to um, hire more crossing guards. We have a few in now. Um, we encourage anyone that would like the position. You know, we're always looking for more to fill more crossing guard positions. Do you think it's often for a person to go out there for an hour and risk their life to get paid only cents? Did, did I ask you about raising the price for a crossing guard so you can get more stable workers to come out? You mentioned something that we don't have any control. Like this council does not have control over why crossing guard is coming. Spanish. Please. Please. Excuse me. Can I get a Spanish TV camera here? It's the only one that is not covering the event. And he doesn't let you go in. He doesn't.
children are doing uh, speedy recovery. I, overall, everybody's here because we're all Hispanics and not everybody listens to us. You get me? Like we all, nobody pays attention to us. If if it was a Hispanic behind the car, we would have already been arrested. We would have we would have had charges pressed on. But since it's the person that was behind the wheel was the director of the fire department, we we could really we can't really do anything as of right now. Overall, we. All the parents, they want justice, they want crossing guards, they want more surveillance. Overall, that's what we all are here for. No, this is not by far. I understand. I'm just telling you what it has been done so you understand. I met with two three holders before and we were working on some situations. That road has this part of a story that uh, it will be uh, that road will be made into two lanes and this, the county is working on it right now, so now as to what some initiative to make sure that something is done properly to avoid any more situations that we just had, not only about the kids, but there's others that have been happening. So within, Mr. Harrison was explaining, within probably within a month or so, we should expect some changes, at least something, a pilot program to start doing something. In terms of the speed bumps that you say that you were looking at, that to have that done, there's a process to get to, to be able to do that. And that uh, includes talking to your neighbor, signing a petition, bringing it to uh, the county clerks, and then that's how the process starts in terms of the speed bumps. Vamos a suponer, yo creo que como ustedes no viven en mi propio, ustedes no saben, ustedes no, llegan. No, 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 Ustedes lo que dicen ustedes, es como la policía. Él vive en la ciudad, él vive medio de la comunidad y todos nosotros que hicimos aquí, ¿no? Entonces, y, eh, so, y por lo menos eh, nosotros como cosas que hicimos aquí, la calle del día que también. Es como dicen, o sea, que como dicen los policías, que este uno, que este uno es para un pueblo sucio, que solamente hispano, pero si ellos no viven aquí, ¿cómo trabajan aquí? He's basically saying that people consider New Brunswick a dirty place to live in, and if you guys aren't living here, how do you? How is it that you guys control everything in New Brunswick? And I just told you that. We Um, overall, he's just saying that how he 
videos that all the Hispanics were always held down, that their little guys, like, they were always just basically held down, and that it's not like that anymore, that they're rising up, and it, it has to be equal, not, not like back then. Gracias. Gracias. Usted, 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 y todos los que están ahí tienen hijos. Si a ustedes les fuera pasado algo con sus hijos, si fuera sido yo que atropello un hijo de él, o un hijo de él, o un hijo suyo, un hijo de los aquí presentes, ¿a dónde estuviera yo ahorita? Like he said, the line for change that he doesn't know why the, the, the driver didn't stop when he knew around 315, 330 the kids come out of school. Tengo otra pregunta que hacer. Yo pienso que los policías solo están indignados en los taxistas. Va un taxista, pa, le siguen, le siguen como que es hormiga, que le caen hasta cinco patrullas a un taxista que se levanta. Yo me levanto desde las 4 de la mañana y son las 1, 2 de la mañana y todavía el taxista está taxiando porque le tengo que llevar comida a, mi, a mis hijos. Tengo que pagar mi renta, tengo que pagar el agua, tengo que pagar luz. Yo no, yo no, es que en verdad, yo les voy a decir que no entiendo. No sé cuál es el trabajo que ellos hacen. No, en verdad que no entiendo. Porque son los hispanos. Busca, por eso busca un lugar. No, 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 Ahora le doy gracias a Dios, ¿sabe por qué, dos niñita? Porque legalicé. Tenía tanto sueño que algún día dije yo, jamás me van a volver a parar. Legalicé mi compañía y le doy gracias a aquel que está arriba. No le voy a dar gracias al hombre que está acá abajo. Le doy gracias a aquel que está ahí arriba. Que por él yo tengo lo que yo tengo. Y no me importa estar perdiendo aquí. Pero yo lo que quiero no son mis hijos, como lo repito. Si fuera sido mis hijos, no sé qué pasara. Pero yo lo que quiero es justicia. Gracias. Y lo respeto. This amount of people come out here and address you for something that the city should have took care of on their own. <clears throat> you should be embarrassed to have this many community residents come out here and flood City Hall and bring children out here on a school night just in hopes that they can get justice. You should be embarrassed. I want to know if there's a pattern. I want you guys to admit or answer this question. Is there a pattern of neglect? from the administration dealing with the community residents in any issue, whether it be traffic, police, or do you feel like the city is doing everything in their power to make this city safe? Can you admit open and honestly that you feel, each one of you sitting at this table, that this uh, city is doing any and everything to make this city safe for the residents? I, Mr. Pittman, I believe that this virus accident is not a city, not done our best to uh, I don't want you to downplay the situation. Those three kids were knocked out of their shoes. They're still in the hospital. Did you see the dent in that suburban? Did you see the type of dent that they left? And the city trying to downplay and act like it was a mild fender bender? Now my question to you is, when the police arrived, did they give them a drug test? Are New Brunswick doing any turn? Are they doing their own independent investigation? Um, New, is New Brunswick, wait, because you just told me the that the city, is, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. Hold on. I understand that. That's county. We're talking about local. Now, you have an opportunity to conduct your own investigation. And my question is, you're saying you're concerned about the residents, you're concerned about the children, you're doing everything in your power to make this a safe place. Did you give him a drug test when the accident happened? No, Mr. Mr. KT, did you have an answer to 
Ahora, no sé si ya se aproxima el Daricos, por eso Marito de Siri y Bob y. Right in my shot. Right in my shot. Sorry, I'm with the city. It's okay. And the appropriate tests that would be required are going to be done. So, is that the reason why we have a process to resolve this? Yes. Okay, like I said, I think that at some point you have to start being more. Because, like they said, they said, you know, they're tired of being neglected. I, I speak on behalf I speak on behalf of the community, but these are people that are not even involved with me. They feel the same way I feel on an everyday basis, and I think that they need to, I think that you guys need to start coming down here every first and third Wednesday. Every first and third Wednesday of the month at 6.30, start coming to the, to the New Brother Council meetings and yell and scream as much as possible. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Adams. I'm Mr. Sobe, closing guards. Captain Miller. Um, closing guards are stationed there Livingston and Delavan, the, the previous crossing guard we designed in April. We hired a crossing guard approximately two weeks later, but that crossing guard is still in training, which is anticipating uh, graduating this Friday, and it'll be banned again on Monday. Uh, okay, depending on the September of the opening of Gretchen School, I'm assuming that, that we will have more than one, or they will be still one, one crossing guard in that intersection. Once the retro school opens. There'll, there'll be one crossing guard at the intersection that we will consider more crossing guard down around the school. And the, the last point I want to make is that the council needs to step up. You do have power. You do have power to make changes. A direct quote from you is that you don't have any control over how much the crossing guards make. That's not true. You have the fiduciary responsibility to determine how much the employees of the city make, including the crossing guards. And in fact, the crossing guard item in the budget has been zeroed out for next year. And I've asked about that, and I want an explanation for why there's been a major change to the crossing guard budget. What does that indicate? The, the, budget, um, the budget assumes 38 um, school crossing guard positions, and it's zeroed out because there's a resolution on the agenda we are in the Board of Education is going to reimburse us for that expense issue. The placement of um, school crossing guards is a function of the police department. They manage the guards, they determine where they think the best uh, and most effective crossing uh, locations are. Um, I hope JT is listening and can we, what's the what's the location that he believes has not been looked at seriously? Remsen Avenue and Delavan. And then one thing where you say you judge where a crossing guard goes, or when an officer is to cover where a crossing guard the goes. The, well, well, excuse me, police department that they're to cover. But how can you judge which street is more dangerous than the other? How do, you, how do you judge which street is more dangerous? Captain Miller, how do you determine the positions of the crossing guards? The, the amount of traffic that the street um, has on it, the number of cars going by, the amount of kids that cross or the different schools, it, it's a judgment call. So you don't, you don't actually keep records of, of, the, of the, with police of what, how many accidents on the road, how many times in the area? Because like I said, on the 16th, where uh, I was, I was told while that where you were only able to have seven officers on the line of traffic to cover for the crossing guard, and you told me that that wasn't true. That wasn't true. Captain Captain Mueller um, responded to that. Right, I, it there's, there's no rule that says we only have seven officers. I mean, at some, we only have so many officers working on a shift and. You can only put so many officers. That changes every day, depending on who's available and who's not, what calls are happening. I, there's no set number on who can go where. I guess it's, you know, it's, it's, it's it's it depends on the availability of the, the officers. Uh, but again, and, and in terms of the acts, I'm pretty sure that they look at all of that when they do, and hopefully moving forward, they, you know, we'll continue to do well, it. I mean, I, 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 I don't I, only say job as a security guard, just a few hours at their home, if you're tired, that, that would like, be Like I said, I know Mr. Ross for over, over 20 years. He's a, he's a wonderful person. He works with kids, and like I said, I see it's more your fault and the police department due to where you do not have anyone out there 
to cross those kids. And believe me, next time I present to you with evidence for the safety of our children, I hope you respond sooner before the damage is done. Joyce Kimber Avenue is a city street, so that one we have done, if you, there is speed homes on Joyce Kimber Avenue, there are pedestrian uh, crossing, they're lighted. Mm -hmm. So there's a few things that have been done already at that, at that street. Mm -hmm. In terms of Livingston Avenue, it's a county road. So we have to work with the county to address the issues and the challenges that we have. Mm -hmm. They have been working on this for four or five years already, doing a study, because we want to make sure that it's done correctly. Mm -hmm. And I know it's taking long, and I tell the people it takes long, absolutely. We want to have this solved by tomorrow, absolutely. But we have to take the steps that we do something that is going to be something that is sustainable, that is going to be there, not that we have to look back and say, okay, we didn't do it right. Mm -hmm. So we're trying to get it right from the get-go. In that sense, we do understand that that's, uh, we have been talking to the county to see what can we do. It's, we know that it's gonna take time, but immediately, uh, for three or four months, we have been talking to the county about this. And, and we are in the works of doing some programs benefit, that benefits the community in terms of education, pedestrian safety, because sometimes uh, we as pedestrians don't cross the street the right way, and campaigns that have been done with the police department to alert these drivers. They are, the committee is absolutely right. People drive very fast on a 25 uh, miles per, per hour limit. Right, right. That's, that's no doubt. And I think that today, having the community out here, I think it was great. I welcome, all of us welcome that. They offer some uh, solutions and some insights that maybe we're not looking at, that we could look at. So I really think that it was, at the end of it, it was very positive of having everybody here. And I, I, we have heard that Robert Rawls was involved in another pedestrian accident 10 years ago and hit pedestrians in the street. So it seems he might have a pattern here. Um, have you heard anything about this? I don't have any knowledge about that. And it was mentioned again, it was asked today, and I don't have any knowledge on that. Is that something do you think that needs to be looked into? There was a, a, a specifically, there was one that they were talking about an accident, so I would look into it. Mm -hmm. But with a, a lawyer, the city lawyer, if he doesn't have a date, a date he had, but a name or who was the, the defendant, the plaintiff, all well, of that, we cannot look. Mm -hmm. But it definitely will look into it because I really have no knowledge. Okay? Thank you. This is a tragedy that should not have occurred, nor should it be repeated. As such, I met yesterday with New Brunswick Mayor Jim Cagle, the City of New Brunswick Director of Planning Glenn Patterson, the Head of Our Infrastructure Management Department Ralph Alvinier, and County Engineer Rich Walner to develop plans to address the issue. We left the meeting with a clear vision and consensus on what the county can do immediately to make the road safer. As a team, we recognize the need for change and will work collectively to improve safety. In fact, the city commissioned a study through Rutgers University to develop improvement plans. That study was presented to the county, which now is in the process of an engineering review to determine the best way to proceed with the study's findings. The first area stretches from Delavan to Baldwin Streets, the area where the children were struck on Tuesday. The second area stretches from Elizabeth Street near the food town to Loretta Street. This area was the site of another critical accident. Starting early next week, Curbside parking along Livingston Avenue in these two sections will be prohibited. At the same time, crews will remove the current striping on the four-lane road. The road will have only one traveling lane in each direction. A center turning lane will be installed. Appropriate striping will be painted. Signs detailing the new traffic pattern and parking restrictions will be installed. This means pedestrians in those areas will not have to cross four lanes of moving traffic or worry about cars jutting out from parking spaces.